Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, has lived in luxury as you might expect from a world leader. Whether he's been spending time at his cottage in Oxfordshire, his townhome, or his residence at Downing Street, he's had some plush options. Only now, he's had to rent out some of his properties. But we're gonna dive into all of that and more here in this house tour. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson is a leader under fire, but really when hasn't that been the case with this guy? From his controversial start as England's leading politician pushing for Brexit to where we are today in the midst of yet another scandal, Boris has had a seemingly endless series of controversies throughout his political career. The Prime Minister maintains that no party even took place. I repeat, Mr. Speaker, that I have been repeatedly assured that there was no party and that and that no covid rules were broken but boris's most recent faux pas has little to do with politics and a lot more to do with his home life over the past few months there have been calls for boris to resign due to his willingness to accept around 58 thousand pounds in donations they contribute towards his recent house remodeling at the Prime Minister's residence located at 11 Downing Street. Turns out that Boris's girlfriend might have gone a little crazy with the wallpaper ink and now an investigation is underway to figure out why exactly Boris failed to alert anyone of that very generous donation from a high up individual in his own political party. In order to make something of an amends, Boris has decided to rent out the two further properties that he owns outright himself. One of these is his summer cottage in Oxfordshire, and the other is a townhouse in South London that he bought in 2019 alongside his partner Carrie. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here in Famous Entertainment, and today we're checking out the properties of Boris Johnson. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. We'll kick things off with Boris's original summer home. Set among the open countryside on the outskirts of the Oxfordshire town of Thame, roughly 13 miles east of Oxford, this upscale farmhouse was purchased by Boris in 2003 for around £640,000 while he was working as an editor at the paper known as The Spectator. Dubbed the old farmhouse, this historic grade 2 listed property is a four bedroom home, which has been outfitted with a tennis court, a swimming pool, and an entirely separate annex that Boris is said to utilize as an office space. The entire residence comes with 2,659 square feet of space spread across two floors. Further highlights include a large sitting room, a spacious dining area, and a gallery kitchen with a tiled stone floor and wooden counters. Meanwhile, upstairs, the bedrooms boast exposed beams and natural timber floors, alongside some attractive views of the garden and fields just outside. Since purchasing the place almost two decades ago, the property has increased significantly in value, as you might expect. Today, it's estimated to be worth as much as 1.2 million pounds, nearly double what Boris spent on it. Outside of the summer months, odds are you probably won't find Boris spending much time here. He's just too too busy, which is probably why once the pandemic hit, he decided to take advantage of the situation to earn a few extra dollars. With British city dwellers looking to flee the countryside for more living space in 2020, Boris decided to rent out this Oxford home, asking for a reported £4,000 a month. Why didn't Boris just head out here for a little quarantining himself? Well, let's be honest, he had an entire country to run, and for the past handful of years, he has been living out of the Prime Minister's residence located at 11 Downing Street. So let's take a look at that place next. Originally occupied by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, tradition of English Prime Ministers moving into 11 Downing Street began with Tony and Sherry Blair in 1997. Prior to that, the expected place of residence for the most important politician in the country was the home located right next door, 10 Downing Street. But here's the thing that Tony and Sherry learned pretty quickly. 11 Downing Street, it's much bigger. So Sherry reportedly spent around £127,000 on modernizing that flat with additions like custom glass bookshelves and some elaborate wallpaper. Then when David and Samantha Cameron moved in around 2010, they furthered the renovations, 
with the installation of a state-of-the-art kitchen that was said to cost around 30,000 pounds. These days, Boris and his wife Carrie are calling this place home, and they're most definitely carrying on with the tradition of sprucing the place up, much to some people's dismay. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at some of the spaces spread across both properties that Boris utilizes throughout his day-to-day. -day. Over the handful of years that Boris and Carrie have lived and worked here, we've had a few occasional glimpses of them inside. For starters, there have been a ton of images of Boris working away in his home office. Featuring high ceilings with cream walls and some equally coordinated curtains, this workspace also boasts furniture made out of dark wood, including a massive desk for Boris to work at. A little further into the room is a large curved mirror with timeless antique gold frame, and of course, the Union Jack hangs in a place of prominence on the far wall. Then there's the cabinet room. This is where Boris takes his weekly meetings, and it boasts a long green table with some matching green velvet curtains, green walls, and a fireplace with a gorgeous painting hanging just above it. Since this is such an important room, the walls and doors have been soundproofed to protect any controversial information from leaking. Oh, and don't forget about that gigantic golden chandelier. In terms of the home's hallways, they're lengthy and largely comprised of wooden floors topped with some patterned rugs. Meanwhile, hanging on the walls are several portraits of former prime ministers. Now the biggest room in the entire house is probably the pillared room which is utilized for parties and receptions. In here there's a Persian rug covering the floors and a portrait of the royal family hanging on the walls. Finally, there's the white drawing room which was originally a private space for prime ministers but since the 1940s it's been used for workplace meetings. Like many other rooms in this home, it boasts cream walls, a large stone fireplace, and artwork by the likes of English romanticist painters. J.M.W. Turner. All right, now let's get into Boris and Carrie's renovations, the very thing that's landed them in such hot water. According to reports, Boris and Carrie wanted to transform the flat from what they called a furniture nightmare into something that resembled a high society haven. To accomplish this goal, Carrie brought on interior designer Lulu Little. This designer's furniture and wallpaper prints can be found in a number of the biggest and most expensive homes in all of England. Now her glamorous work can be found in the Prime Minister's home as well. But some people are a little upset about all of this. As the Prime Minister of England, Boris receives a public grant of around £30,000 a year to spend on his living quarters. That's the same amount of money that the Camerons use to update their kitchen. The problem? Boris and Carrie's renovations have cost a lot more than that. In fact, estimates suggest that the work that they've had done on the interior totals as much as £200,000. When the public was made aware of this fact, they weren't happy. More than just the amount of money being spent, people were upset because Boris or someone in his inner circle went out of their way to hide the fact that when the renovations went over budget, Boris's political party stepped in to cover the cost. Then, they didn't tell anyone about it. In fact, the UK media was able to unearth that at least 58,000 pounds of renovation work was paid for by the Conservative Party before then being covered in turn by Tory donor Lord Brownlow. As such, the Conservative Party was fined 18,000 pounds after the Electoral Commission found it had failed to accurately declare the donations towards the renovations. The only thing working in Boris's favor here is that he was reportedly hands off with this design and had left most of the decision making up to Carrie. Furthermore, records apparently suggest that Boris was never made aware of the donations till February 2021. At that point, he was said to have settled all debts himself. Probably something that cost him a pretty penny and which leads us to his next property, a townhouse in South London that Boris is renting out to recoup those losses. Back in the summer of 2019, shortly after getting hitched, Boris and Carrie plopped down just under £2 million for a semi-detached townhouse. This home is said to boast four double bedrooms, two reception rooms, two bathrooms, and a modern kitchen with wooden floors and views of a nearby park. There are also marble fireplaces, wooden shutters, and even a secluded 100-foot large garden with a pond and two large sheds located on the premises. But Boris and Carrie have spent basically zero time living here since buying it. In fact, neighbors suggest that they've almost never seen them. Instead, there's a young couple that seems to be living out of the property. Why? Well, because Boris has had to rent this place out to make back some of the money he had to cover for those renovations at 11 Downing Street. 
Well, that's gonna bring us to the end of our Boris Johnson house tour. What did you guys think about the Prime Minister of the UK's living quarters and this whole redesign situation? Be sure to drop a comment down below to chat about that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for new content and ring that bell to be alerted for new vids. I'm Kara and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!